Once Glory quit on us, so to speak, we just hung out and talked and recapped and talked about the steps that Caroline was going to take to fix her behavioral problems with Glory. Now, she laid on the couch and was like, you know, all she wants to do is be on my shoulder, lick my face. All she wants to do is lay right here. Is that hormonal? Is this hormonal? She's just asking if certain things that she does on a daily basis with Glory are hormonal triggers. She wants to sit on my shoulder all the time and just lick my face. One of our rules is if we can't get the bird down easily the very first time we ask, it's all out on the shoulder. Hmm. And so an example of where you are now, having to scrape the bird off or clothesline them onto there, Mm -hmm. means that you don't have that control yet mm -hmm. through some of these tips that we're teaching you. Because hormonal triggers aren't necessarily the same for every single bird, even though there are some universal ones out there that apply to all birds. Same with people. <sighs> Thanks for that. Uh, that's why we always say every interaction is a training session, whether you like it or not, you're increasing the likelihood for good behavior or decreasing the likelihood for good behavior. So set yourself up for success. So what happened in the context with Caroline is that she would lay on the couch, Glory would come up and kind of cuddle with her and she asked, is it hormonal? And I said, if it leads to hormonal behavior, like a trigger, like regurgitation, um, shuddering or kind of, what is it? Like <laughs> vibrating, but some birds like vibrate and shudder. Um, I'm just not going to go into the rest of them, but regurgitation is <laughs> a more obvious one. And what is do they what, sound like? Yeah, and is what we <laughs> dealt with with Glory. So what happened was that she would lay down, get in this position, Glory would eventually come up, she would cuddle her and pet her, and then what happened during our discussion was Glory started regurgitating. And I was like, well, you have your answer right there. So every time you do this in the evenings, you are stimulating this bird to be more and more hormonal. And unfortunately for Caroline, pretty much everything she was doing was stimulating hormones from the lack of sleep to the mushy foods that she was constantly eating that were at a warm yeah. temperature. Um, Regurgitation temperature. Literally, they Think were resembling that. Think about that next time you have oatmeal. Yeah, aww. <laughs> oh, you liked oatmeal. I like cream of wheat in the morning. Thanks, babe. <laughs> You're uh, <welcome. laughs> You just keep derailing my thoughts. But anyways, you know, even from the way I remember Caroline saying, like, I feel like I can't pet her anywhere. That's not true at all. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of habitual things. It's just you have to learn how you can touch her because especially right now in this season, you might be able to get away with the beak stuff in the summer and the winter. And that's because she had established all this petting that was... Mm, She'd established herself as the heavy petter. Yeah, and she so... was communicating that she was Glory's mate on every single level, and that's why Glory was getting aggressive towards the other birds in the flock. She was like, "Stay away from my mate. Nobody can touch this person. This is my this is my mate." Um, and she was becoming territorial, possessive, and and Caroline was saying it as like, "She only loves me. She just loves me so much. She just wants to be with me." And all these things were stemming from a hormonal root, not from. True love. Aww. It's a different kind of loving. Like if I sat on your shoulder and just licked your face? Yeah, that would not be pleasant. Oh. You're a little heavy <laughs> on my shoulder. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Fatty. <laughs> <laughs> you could lose some weight. That'd be great. <laughs> um, so I hope that you guys learned a ton from this video. I have to be honest, when we first got the call from Caroline and she had all these aggression and screaming and all these sorts of problems with her hyacinth macaw, I thought this is gonna be really, really hard. And then when we got there, I was like, oh, it's just hormones. Um, unfortunately, the hard part for Caroline is that it's become habitual and she's unaware of the fact that she does it. Now we've made her aware of it, which is literally half the battle. I think that the most problems that come in the households are that people are unaware of the bad things that they are doing that are that are creating these problems or these behavioral problems with their birds. So that's another great thing because you were saying like, oh, is target training only good for birds that need to learn how to step up? Target training is great for getting a bird off your shoulder. It's one of the techniques that I teach first to project birds because I don't want to get bit. Something really cool that you're about to see is a capturing session. While we are talking to Caroline, walking her through something on her own, Glory walks down to Caroline's hand. Dave stops everything to click that clicker. I get up and I hurriedly get her a treat to reward her for this behavior. And she's a little bit like, huh, okay, well, I'll take that. Not quite sure what I did. You give her time to think about it and she repeats this really soon after. So you can see she immediately goes to the hand and this time she anticipates and looks around like, 
hey, where's my treat? She's kind of looking at me like, is it coming? Is it going in this hand? And you can see after just simply one repetition, she's already anticipating and doing this behavior again and offering it. This is how powerful capturing is. And this sort of thing is happening all the time. Again, Dave clicks the clicker because he sees that she's making this effort and I go and I grab her another reward. This is something that will help Caroline long-term. And so I just want to come back and clarify the ABCs for Caroline's situation. It was antecedent, the cue, is she would lay on the couch. The behavior, the trick, if you will, is a bird would come on over, back on in and start shuddering, right? Because the consequence was she got pet in all the right places. For that behavior. You guys yeah. will notice in this in this video, she um, it's very subtle, but Glory does this wing twitch. It's kind of like the wings go up and out for a second. <clears throat> it seems so minuscule and innocent, but it was that happened. I saw that happen, and I thought, oh man! And it that was just before the regurgitation started. So that is another sign that if Caroline really dials in and sees that, she could immediately stop. But what she should stop is doing the entire behavior altogether. But if that sort of, um, I guess, marker happened at another point, she could immediately say like, oh, that's stimulating hormones. I got to stop here because it's it is a progression, even though a lot of us miss the signs. Yeah. So in that example, the way to correct it is don't leave the bird three feet away from you on a, on a T-stand where it can climb down if you plan to sit and relax. Like, I know that everybody wants to love and pet their birds, but there's a time of year to do it, and there's a place, and there's music, and there's candles if you do it the wrong what time of year. Girl. So, uh, <laughs> there's, it's very important for her to recognize, hey, you know what, maybe during the fall and the spring, I shouldn't sit in that exact position, having the bird there. Uh, maybe I can come up with, with something else, like have to go do some forging, or some, you know, anything else other than the cue being sit on the couch, bird comes up, gets love, and then leads to deeper things. I'm totally censored. Yeah. So I'm really glad that we got to bring this video to you guys because it is a completely different consult than we've been able to bring to you in master classes or in-home consultations. So the fact that this was on hormones, it's during the spring when it's likely to be exaggerated. Please just be aware that it's not just spring hormones, it's fall hormones too. Um, and it's, these are triggers you need to be aware of. And guys, girls, everybody, it's something that can be done year round. Yeah. Right? It's just it is. heightened. I need to mag that it's heightened during this spring and fall but it happens all year round and we see tons of parrot owners that do this again habitually right they start because it's a it's a little you know sweet little three month old macaw that all of a sudden is like oh that kind of feels good and now you're its mate you're one person bird it hates your spouse it flies after them to attack them and now you have to call bird tricks because you need help doesn't sound so bad. But you can reach us at info at <laughs> to set up a consultation. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys again for helping us get in touch with Caroline. Those of you that wanted to see this collaboration, I'm really excited that we could help her and hopefully we see some awesome success from her in the future with all of her birds. All right, so we end it here? I think so. I think so. I feel like you have a lot to work on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give you any more. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you just always like need to improve and learn to get to the next level. So this is helping me and my birds to get to the next level. So I really appreciate your help as well. And yes, thanks for watching and we love you. And comment below, let me know what you think. And if you wanna see Glory, um, yeah, going yeah, down. see your progress. Yeah. So <laughs> Progressing. So you just got your answer about what that does. Yeah. <laughs> trigger hormone everything is hormonal like us humans too right <laughs> 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 <laughs>